Greetings. In the following presentation, I will provide an interpretation and analysis of Edwin Chantecott's essay, Another Country. Now, the writer, Edwin Chantecott, she's a Haitian-born Haitian American writer, Haitian-American writer. Um, one of the one of the um, collection of short stories that I'm familiar with is a is a book called Crick Crack, and that particular book it's a little bit more personal, right? It's almost you know a first person kind of point of view with with, with the uh, creative aspects of uh, you know creative writing of sorts. But <clears throat> this essay is a little bit different. You know, it still has that personalized touch, um, but not not in the sense of of it, it just being um, Dante Cott herself uh, living the experiences. She's doing it in a much more, from a much more broad perspective. So let's take a look. Let's observe another country. And in, in her essay, um, this is what I'm going to label as her arguments. I'll go ahead and read this quote, and then I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit now. This quote doesn't come at the beginning. It's actually the at the very end of the book, right? and, and I'm going to go ahead and read it, and then we can, um, well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll um, attempt to, um, I'll attempt to uh, uh, clarify it a little bit. So here we go. Among the many realities brought to light by Hurricane Katrina was that never again could we justifiably deny the existence of this country within a country that other America, which America's immigrants and the rest of the world may know much more intimately than, than many Americans do, the America that is always on the brink of humanitarian and ecological disaster. No, it is not Haiti or Mozambique or Bangladesh, but, but it may, might as well be. Okay. Well, um, my interpretation, of course, is that generally, um, you know, if, if one is an immigrant, right, or even if one is an American, but is, but is an American almost in that non-American stereotype, because if, after all, you are from America, then you are, uh, you know, there's a stereotype, right, that if you're American, you're fairly well off. You are, you are, um, you are stable, right? You don't have any uh, particular economic or humanitarian needs of sorts. Um, but what what um what um Don Ticott seems to be saying is, she says, look, you know, they, they, these this America in which these Americans, of which some include some immigrants. Uh, they're they're generally ignored, disregarded, unjustifiably so, of course. They're ignored and disregarded um, unless there's some type of you know some type of uh, need on the basis of humanitarianism or you know a, a threat of Mother Nature. Otherwise, that other than America, it really doesn't exist. Right. So, so um, uh, isn't that what happens to this? You know, the, the 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 many sectors of America that are impoverished, severely impoverished, the many sectors of America that that you know us uh, uh, seem like um, where people are in, in a position of other people around the world that are in 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 need of, severe need of, you know, humanitarian assistance. It doesn't exist in America, right? The stereotype, of course, right? It doesn't exist in America, except whenever we have chaos, whenever we have a disaster, look, there it is. There is that other than America there. So let me, let me, um, let me um, uh, reword this a little bit. And and then I'll I'll position the thesis uh, in this manner in which I'm clarifying. So, um, 
I'm providing a formula here. Of course, this is just one approach to writing an argument. But the the um, um, this argument here, right, uh, when you're writing an expository essay, and um, you have a certain you have a certain structure of sorts in which you know a subject is very clear. In this case, I think the subject is America. Right, and then there's a point about this particular America that Dante Cotta is referring to, and then why that's the particularity of the point. And, and I think it, be, it can also be summed up by um, Dante Cotta references uh, Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. One of the quotes there by one of the authors who says, Poe men ain't got no business at the show. Yeah, so, so, um, to clarify and, and, and kind of translate that a little bit, this is what I'm arguing that I believe Dante Cott seems to be stating. She says, I believe, this is not her, this is actually my words, but it's her idea, right? These are my words in interpretation of her idea. So in many ways, it's also her words, right? Americans, particularly those who are in financial and humanitarian need, seem to be unjustly disregarded as contributory citizens unless surfaced and revealed amidst the hardships of chaos and natural disasters. So, arguably, let's break this down even further. As a subject, um, you know, Americans in a state of financial or humanitarian need, right? Um, these Americans... They seem to be unjustly disregarded as contributory citizens. Why? Well, they seem to be disregarded because um, there's no need to surface them, right? There's no need to surface them. Um, they're not, you know, they, you know, Hurston's quote, Poe man got no business at the show, right? We have no need to surface them. Of course, we don't want, we as America, right? I'm speaking generally, we as America, we're not going to disregard them when uh, issues of terror or issues of, uh, of uh, um, um, an ecological disaster come forth, right? We don't want to come across as that cold, cold-blooded, so to speak. So they're unjustly disregarded unless surfaced and revealed amidst the hardships of chaos and natural disasters. Okay. So this is this is the argument I believe that that Hurston is positioning. And um, she begins the, the her essay, Tante Kata, she begins her essay by referring to Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. Now the um, um Dante Cott, of course, is going to uh, infer um, this issue of um, being identified as American within the context of a um, uh, um, chaos, right? Chaos or, you know, a natural disaster. But, uh, and the novels, this story by Hurston is not particularly about a storm, so to speak. But it's, but, Undeniably, there's a there's quite a bit of chaos, and part of this chaos results um, as a result of uh, um, you know the storm that comes in and uh, and affects the uh, the protagonist in the novel. The writers are Neil Hurston. She's of course a, a writer of uh, it's considered part of the Harlem Renaissance. And, and, of course, she writes about the struggles, the struggles, and, and she refers to not just the, the um, you know, being black, right, or a minority, but being a woman, right, the struggles of being a woman, particularly a black woman, so to speak. Um, she, she contextualizes that whenever a storm occurs, right, there's the context of, you know, here comes this, this terrible storm of sorts, a hurricane, right? It could be a tsunami, whatever it is. And, and then as the storm strikes, you know, as the storm strikes, what is it that occurs? Well, you're going to have uh, numerous peoples that 
in the aftermath of the storm, they're going to be left with no home. And the, 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 um, um, why maybe maybe they didn't they couldn't afford maybe flood insurance or maybe they couldn't afford afford property insurance or right? really surviving to stay alive um, many of them couldn't uh, uh, acquire food or water uh, or so or, or if they did they did very scarcely but there's not some of them were not prominently well off and didn't have um you know didn't have the the um the means to acquire these goods uh the majority also did not have access to medical care right again medical care costs money and many of them could not afford it right um and, and so a lot of people are positioned in this in the sense of, of hardship of course with with the storm coming in with no home, with no food, with no medical care. There's also, you know, at the top of the list, of course, the hardship of death. And even in death, right? I'm not laughing because it's funny, but I'm laughing because of the, you know, the, the, the tense, that churning feeling that you, one gets when, when an individual or an individual's family is put in this position where somebody dies and thus you're left in a very difficult and trying position. Uh, in this case, a lot of people, you know, there's no coffins for the dead, so to speak. Um, you know, where, where, where are we, right? You know, what, what America is this? Isn't this the richest country in the world? Isn't this just the country? Yet you have many people... That you know, yes, I'm revealing you now. You 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 are indeed Americans, but you're now being revealed amidst this uh, this storm, right? Uh, um, of course, uh, uh, Dante Cut's going to refer to uh, um, um, one of the the prominent. She's going to make references to several storms, but. Prominently, at least in America, she's going to refer to Hurricane Katrina, and I'll, and I'll address that in a little bit. But um, she states, you know, in America, there seems to be a taken for grantedness that we kind of disregard this America. We kind of disregard that America, right? And, and you know, we'll see it in films. We'll see storms in films, and we're like, okay, but we. But there's a there's a, we're kind of at peace with that because it's just the movies, right? Or or it's not an it's not in a country that's going to immediately affect us. We have nothing to do with that, right? If I'm being a snobbish type of American, so to speak, right? Um, so either in film or in literature, I read this. It's no, it's no big. It's 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 out of my concern, right? And and so you say, yeah, that's something that occurs elsewhere. Uh, and of course, there's a reference to you know Thailand or other Asian tsunamis in which these storms are occurring over there. Yeah, but any, if anything happens in America, uh, um, yeah, it's really not of big concern because um, issues of severe nature don't don't they don't really happen in America. We're kind of bulletproof to that, right? There's there's I'm being, of course I'm being a little sarcastic to this, but there's that there's that sense of there's that sense of inference, of, of disregard for that other America, right? Those people don't exist. Those people in that state of suffering, they don't exist, right? Uh, she makes a really interesting, and she brings up a series of examples of these other, right, other uh, uh, um, elsewhere type of concerns. And this one was really interesting. This is one in, um, this is one in, um, Mozambique, and and here in Mozambique, when 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 they had this uh, terrible storm, um, you had a woman by the name of Sofia Pedro, and she actually gave birth to a baby in a tree, right? You know this 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 um, you know how's that not going to make the news, right? I, the, the, this really unique experience of Sofia Pedro having this baby in a tree. 
Of course, that would not happen in America, right? That only happened, the, the extreme nature of sorts only happens elsewhere. That doesn't exist here, right? Uh, in reference to Haiti, her hometown, she refers to this tropical storm, Jian. Uh, uh, Jian. Uh, um, uh, um, and, and this storm here, um, of course, it was horrific. It left, it left many dead and many without property, many without food, many without health care, many without coffins, right? And paralleling, of course, the, the hardships in, in uh, uh, Zora Neale Hurston's uh, novel. Uh, but again, that's, that's outside our concerns, right? That America doesn't exist. Uh, we're going to disregard that other America because I fail to believe that it exists. The, the, we are the richest country in the world, right? Um, she goes on further, further in Mozambique, referring back to Mozambique, where children watched as parents were washed away. Um, parent, uh, of course, the poor children up on the trees and and their parents down below drowning amidst the, the, the terrible outcome of the storm. Right? So she gives these examples almost as a precursor to the surreality um, of, you know, it's normal over there, but it couldn't possibly be normal over here, except here comes Hurricane Katrina, right? And oh goodness, you know, here comes Katrina and... Um, what it's it's actually happening here in america it's actually happening here in the u.s oh i see these people i see those people of hardship facing hardship oh I, I see they in fact exist now no home no food no drink no uh, health care no coffins for the dead anymore All right oh you know is 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 it is it indeed occurring here, right? And and, and of course, uh, to take it even further, you know, the, the human nature fell out. Of course, we all know nonsense occurs elsewhere, but here in America, you had people raiding the stores, and uh, um, not out of not out of uh, um, just uh, not not just out of the morbid nature of being criminal, right? But out of necessity to feed oneself, to feed, more importantly, to feed one's family. Um, and, and oh my, this, this is occurring in America, right? Also, we had uh, these, uh, the forgotten public hospitals where nurses pumped oxygen into dying page, page patients. Um, again, you know, uh, um, richest country or at least one of the richest countries in the world and here um, uh, we're having this severe hardship that you tend to see elsewhere right we're also witnessing these uh, roaming armed gangs right who who amidst the the uh, this chaotic occurrence well they're gonna they're gonna benefit as well from raiding stores for both the criminal enterprise and for also for the necessity of uh, survival, right? So, you know, here comes this, um, here comes this, uh, this storm, this hurricane, and um, all of a sudden America is no different from the context of a third world, right? You know, the richest country, one of the richest countries in the world, lowered to the basis of a third world where you now you're witnessing these people formerly disregarded and now these people are being revealed right? I, think, I think one of the masterful aspects of Dante Cott's writing is is the way in which she's exemplifying this right the cleverness of her her exemplification to to supporting her argument uh, she's now going to go into a series of examples in which she's going to apply to the media. And, and uh, one of these medias, she, she references this anchor woman, Soledad O'Brien, Soledad O'Brien, who states, um, you know, if you lowered the volume on the television, 
um, one could argue that whatever it is I'm looking at on TV, and this is, I think she's referring to a CNN analyst, um, I would have I would have concluded that you know what I'm looking at that that's Haiti or maybe one of those African countries, many of which you cover, right? Re referencing, of course, uh, Hurricane Katrina, the, the out the outcomes of Katrina, and, and of course. O'Brien here is is saying, yeah, you, you lowered the volume where it's we're not talking about the U.S. I, I don't I can't figure out if we're talking about the U.S. I would have I would have concluded that it's oh yeah that's happening in Haiti that's happening in one of those African countries but not here right and then she refers to um, Nancy Gibbs Nancy Gibbs of uh, Time Magazine uh, she too she says the, these things happened in Haiti. But they don't. But not here. So these 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 severe tragedies. This is something outside of the U.S. It's not happening. That nothing that happens here, right? Um, there's also a separation, right? A separation by the uh, the Canadian uh, um, media. Uh, Kate Hartfield, who states, you know, Ottawa is not New Orleans. So she she in a way she's she's trying to make this. The, the Canadian context of things. Similarly, she's she's trying to make it in that American way that we too disregard that other America. Well, she's Hartfield in a way you could argue is doing the same thing. She's arguing that this Canada, this Canada of of, of hardship and chaos and 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 terrible positioning. Oh, that doesn't exist here, right? that's elsewhere it's really interesting this is the brilliance again of, of um, Dante Cott's analysis right um, and, and and she says she quotes she says you know so here in America the poor in the richest country in the world should not even exist right so the, this idea this is America there's no poverty in America there's no hardship in America. You know, it's so, so what is it about that other America? I mean, this is really interesting, right? What is it about that other America? And I'd like to read a, a section from her, um, uh, from her book, um, where she describes this notion of this, this other America. And I think it's really interesting if you, if you allow me to read it here briefly. So what I'm going to quote here, this is in uh, page uh, 754 of the uh, Norton Reader, and uh, this is what uh, this is what Dante Cott states, and she says, "This is not the America we know," chimed many field reporters who, haunted by the faces and voices of the dying, the stench of bloated corpses on city streets during the day, and screams for help rising from attics at night recorded the early absence of first responders with both sorrow and rage. Their fury could only magnify ours for if they could make they, for if they could make it to New Orleans, Mississippi, and Alabama, and give us minute by minute accounts of the storm and its aftermath, why couldn't the government agencies find their way there? Indeed, what these early charged news reports offered was a passport to an America where one does not always have bus fare, much less an automobile, where health insurance is as distant a dream as a college education, where poverty is a birthright, not an accident of fortune. This is the America that continues to startle, the America of the needy and never have enoughs, the America of the undocumented, the unemployed and underemployed, the elderly and the infirm, an America that remains invisible until a rebellion breaks out, gunshots ring out, or a flood rages through. Perhaps this America does, does have more in common with the developing world than with the one it inhabits. For the poor and outcasts everywhere dwell within their own country, where more often than not they must fend for themselves. That's why one can so easily become a refugee within one's own borders, because one's perceived usefulness and precarious citizenship are always in question. Whether in Haiti or in that other America, 
the one where people have no flood insurance. It's a powerful, powerful paragraph. And, and again, you know, she says, yeah, the, 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 those who are, those who are in need, right? Uh, uh, those who are poor and outcast, uh, they're generally disregarded until, what? Until gunshots ring out or, uh, um, um, a flood rages through or a rebellion breaks out. It's not until then that you realize that other America actually exists. It's really, really, really uh, craftful by a, a Dante Cut. Uh, in addition, she utilizes uh, the examples of um, not just the, not just ecological disasters, but also the examples of, uh, of uh, chaos. In this case, she refers to 9-11. Right. And and interestingly, you know, um, here, here's an act of terrorism. Uh, and um, once this terrorism comes out and it and, and now here's the here's the um, the issue with this act of terrorism. And, and that's that the immigrants that are surfacing, the, the immigrants who surface in observing such acts of, te of terrorism, they, they 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 now realize they said, oh, my gosh. Uh, um, this is occurring in America, right? So the immigrant, in a way, you know, who comes from elsewhere and comes to America, maybe perhaps uh, perceiving America as the grass is greener on the other side, you know, the one where dreams come true, you know, the, they might come in here intimidated and feeling that, oh, America is, is this fascinating, unique bulletproof um, um, model-like place, you know, the world of Disneyland and Amazon and Tesla and you know, all these all, you know, these international companies of sorts, right? Um, there's a sense of intimidation, but when they get here and they, you know, the, these ecological disasters occur and these acts of terrorism occur, the immigrant starts feeling, uh, ironically and interestingly, at home, Right, you know, she quotes. You know, there's, there's, uh, two countries are forced to merge within you. To clarify that, um, let me utilize her her reference to Masood Farivar, whose words, uh, and quoting uh, Farivar Farivar's words here, who says, you know, I, I'm witnessing 9/11 and I'm seeing the, the the bloodshed and the terrible nature of it, and you know, generally I don't, I'm not one for uh, you know, I'm from Afghanistan, but I'm not one to start, um, you know, fl uh, swinging out my flag, so to speak. But now, look, I'm, I am going to swing out my flag to show you that, hey, you, you know, uh, um, yes, I'm an immigrant, but I'm, I'm together in this with you, right? So just in the way that I'm, uh, you know, back in my country, you know, this, this daily occurrence of terrorism, well, guess what? You know, I, I, I realize it's happening here too. Hey, I can relate. I am with you with this. We're in this together. Um, she also, she also uh, exemplifies and utilizes the example of um, Isabel Allende, you know, uh, one of her, one of my favorite books of hers, House of Spirits. Uh, and of course, she's written many other books, but uh, she's she's a really interesting writer. Uh, and and the irony with Isabel Allende is that her the the U.S. you know in, a, in an attempted coup um, um, killed her, her her one of her family members. I believe it was if I'm not mistaken. I believe it was her father, Salvador Allende, right? And uh, so this coup thing, you know, that kills her father. And 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 you know, she comes, she comes over to to the U.S. becomes a writer, and she's witnessing that you know the nine eleven occurs, and she says, "Oh my gosh, okay, I I guess terrorism does terrorism just doesn't occur elsewhere, uh, just doesn't occur in my hometown of Chile, Chile, my home country, Chile, and uh, I'm witnessing here in the U.S. You know what?" I no longer feel that I am an alien in the United States. I'm realizing right, the U.S. in many ways is not unlike my country. 
right? Um, and so in some, you know, you know, whether we're immigrants or minorities or whomever we are, um, are we not all Americans, right? In, 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 in the sense of hardship, in the sense of chaos, are we not all Americans? And so uh, relating back to her thesis, right, her argument, her statement, um, that there is a sense of injustice in disregarding the Southern America. Why? Because, hey, look, you're not, America is not bulletproof. America is not, you know, uh, uh, immutable to uh, the chaos of ecological hardship or uh, terroristic hardship, right? Um, this is an America, right? So within America, there is, again, arguing, right? Within America, we have to gain conscientiousness that it is unjust to disregard these Americans. But guess what? We're all Americans. We are all going to endure and experience these hardships. Right? Maybe Katrina didn't hurt you, but hey, if you're working on a, if you're if you're on the hundredth floor of the Twin Towers and uh, you know you're you're wearing a, a fine suit behind the computer, guess what? It, it happens to you too, right? So let's let's justifiably acquire some sense of solidarity in terms of humanitarianism, right? In in term in terms of you know economic uh, need, provide food, provide shelter, provide health care to all Americans, right? We are all Americans, right? Um, so I hope this provides you with a good overview of her essay. Of course, it's my interpretation. Um, but uh, uh, in some sense, I hope it clarifies, I think, the argument that she's getting at, right? Or the argument that uh, Dante Cott is, is, of course, inferring. And it's a beautiful essay. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's hard. It's a hard essay, right? You know, it's, it's a, uh, uh, an essay to reflect upon and, and consider um you know that the sense of injustice of disregarding the poor the ones in need uh it just doesn't occur occur elsewhere it occurs right here in the united states of america okay um thank you for listening thank you